M. Night Shyamalan returns with his latest film, Knock at the Cabin. So today I'm going to be ranking all 15 of his movies from worst to best. Hey everybody, my name is Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services. If you guys are like me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell notification for more up and coming content. Leave your list down below. How would you rank all 15 of M. Night Shyamalan's films from worst to best? Have you seen them all? His films are a bit of a hit and miss for me, so I'm really curious to see how you would rank all of his movies. Coming in in last place is The Happening. This is easily his worst film. This is a poorly written film and some of the worst dialogue i have heard in a movie behind us there were bodies on the road into town cheese and crackers the way that mark Wahlberg and zoe deschanel interact with each other it's very cringy the films reveal at the end with mother nature and the plants and everything it's just really stupid the film has a decent premise but its execution and the way that it is structured is very poor but it's one of those films that you just watch and you just have to laugh at because of how terrible the movie is this is a film with the really bad acting the dialogue is bottom of the barrel this is easily his worst film. Coming in in 14th place is The Last Airbender. Now, I have not seen The Last Airbender animated series, but I can tell that there's no love in this film when it comes to adapting a source material that's hugely popular. Everybody loves The Last Airbender, but this film, there's no excitement for it there's no uh style to this film it's very boring for a film that could be really entertaining and you just do not feel any kind of excitement for it you just watch the movie and you just want it to be over the conversations between the characters are there's no room for growth the characters are not entertaining at all either visually it's all right it's just a film that took like I said, really popular franchise, an animated series, and just did nothing with it. There's no love for it. It's a boring film. It's just absolutely terrible. Coming in at number 13 is Wide Awake. Before he directed Sixth Sense and Signs and all those thrillers that he did, he had two smaller films, Wide Awake and Praying with Anger. Wide Awake stars Rosie O'Donnell. She is a baseball-loving nun. We have a young boy in here who wants to find God. Uh, this film's tones are just kind of clashing with each other. It's not a memorable film by any means, and it's not one that people are going to recognize when you look at M. Night Shyamalan because of films like Signs and Unbreakable and Split. This is a film that not a lot of people know about or just really overlook it. And and because it's just not a really entertaining, memorable film. The tones clash. At times it wants to be funny, at times it wants to be dramatic when we have this young boy looking for God because he wants to get some closure uh, with the death of his grandfather. And so I, at times these tones are really clashing and trying to overtake the other tone and it just does not work. This is a, a film that's just fine. Like there's nothing like terribly wrong with the movie but there's nothing like amazing about it either it's good as like a one or two time watch but it's not gonna be a film that you're just gonna want to watch over and over again the performances are decent but those tones just don't work well together Coming at number 12 is After Earth. I was looking forward to this film, having Will Smith and Jaden Smith again together after they were in the film. Pursuit of Happiness, I thought father-son duo could be pretty fun for a sci-fi film, but they really did not use Will Smith in here. It relied on Jaden Smith and he did not give the best performance. He wasn't captivating at all, didn't demand your attention. He was just there. This film had a lot of potential. It could have explored this world and could have had some intense moments within it, but it's not exciting. It's a very dull film for a heavy sci-fi film uh, that has that has a really good actor of Will Smith, but didn't utilize him. And Jaden Smith giving a really one note performance. I remember seeing this movie and just being disappointed with what I saw. Uh, it could have been a cool action film, uh, some intense moments, some great world building within it, but did not utilize father and son duo in here and it really feels like the movie is going nowhere in this string of movies that he did around that time with after earth 
and the last airbender that was like the worst part of his career coming in at number 11 is praying with anger this is his first directed film and it feels like a directorial debut it's much smaller and more personal for m night Shyamalan. he appears in all of his movies as cameos even made his way into knock at the cabin but this film he stars in it and he's a decent actor uh but this movie uh I think it's all right. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. It's just a film that's all right. It's supposed to be like this personal film for M. Night Shyamalan and uh, personal for the character, uh, but there's really no development. It just feels a bit repetitive at times when you look at this character and what this character is going through. The film at times seems a little too sappy and the performances are just all right. Coming in at 10th place is Lady in the Water. M. Night Shyamalan dabbled in fairy tales with this film. Bryce Dallas Howard is in it, and we also have Paul Giamatti. I always thought it was so weird how M. Night Shyamalan puts himself into this film, and we see him in all of his films like these little cameos, but with this film, he gives himself a little more to do that is very important to the story and an integral part to the end. It's just a way for him to kind of boost his ego in the film and I always thought it was so weird and off-putting within this movie. I remember watching it when it was first released and not even finishing it and watching it again throughout the years and I just had the hardest time actually finishing this movie. It's a poor attempt at a fairy tale story. Paul Giamatti is all right in here. Bryce Dallas Howard is decent. It's got a good cast within it, but they aren't doing the most within this film to make it exciting. Coming at number nine is Glass. I was really looking forward to Glass, having the characters from Unbreakable team up with the characters from Split, this end the end to this surprise trilogy that started with Unbreakable, then we had Split and now Glass. It was so cool to see Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson return starring alongside James McAvoy. But the characters just don't feel the same. There's not that uh, love for these characters like you had in Split and Unbreakable. The way that the characters are presented in the film, it's just to have them kind of meet up and have that kind of nostalgia for Unbreakable and see more of James McAvoy in the film. There's really, the performances from Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis are really, really hollow where he had a lot of development and uh, look into superheroes within the film Unbreakable. Uh, the look at the superhero genre and uh, superheroes and how they feel about their powers is absent from this film. And so Glass is at times a bit of a hollow movie despite having a good cast and the characters returning and it being really hyped up. Really don't utilize the fact that Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson are returning alongside James McAvoy at times it's cool to see them together but they don't really go deep into that so I found Glass to be a bit disappointing when you look at the characters and there's no development for them and it's just a really hollow story for them coming at number eight is old the dialogue in old reminds me a bit of happening it's it's odd it's uh, a bit cringy at times it has a unique reveal at the end the twist is pretty decent it's got a fun premise and at times they really kind of dive deep into that premise and at times it is a bit creepy and at times you're really interested in what's going to happen with some of these characters but for a large majority of the film it's feel like it's doing the same thing over and over again and there's only so much that i can be fully invested in with this movie i think what carries this film is that premise and kind of that haunting feeling to it but it can only be used so much within it before it starts to get old. It starts off strong, kind of falls apart towards the end, and then it picks up again once it picks up once again with its reveal at the end. But that's about it. Old is not gonna be one that I'm gonna want to rewatch over and over again, but it's just kind of fine. It's like right there in the middle of his films. Coming in seventh place is Knock at the Cabin. This is his most recent film, and it's a pretty solid thriller. 
Dave Batista gives a really good performance in here as a armed stranger. He comes to this couple and tells them that one of them has to kill the other person to stop this apocalypse. As we explore these characters and the conversations that they have, you start to question if this apocalypse is real or not. And the way that this film is structured, the tone is very haunting and the atmosphere is chilling. And I love how they really stuck with that. It's a very secluded film inside this cabin and everybody has to have a moment and everybody has to play off of each other and through uh, conversations we have development for these characters. It's really challenging to the characters and you're wondering if the apocalypse is real or not. The film has a really solid pace. It starts off very strong. I was expecting some kind of like huge reveal at the end. I just did not get that, which was a bit disappointing. But overall, Knock at the Cabin was very solid. The performances are really good. The chilling, the chilling atmosphere is solid throughout. It loved. I love that it was secluded. The film relied on the characters' performances to get an understanding of. Uh, the situation that they are in and if it was urgent or not coming in sixth place is the visit the first time i saw the visit i was absolutely blown away with it it's a film that i'm not able to re-watch over and over again because of that reveal it works so well within it and you're just kind of i didn't see it coming and it really adds a lot to this movie creepy atmosphere is in here and development for the brother and sisters it's got some generic uh jump scares within it and at times it feels like a generic horror film but it works and when you think of all of his films i think it's a pretty fun one Coming in in fifth place is The Village. Now I know a lot of people have this really low on the list, but I really like The Village. The first time I saw it, I was really scared with some of the scenes. I was younger and uh, the, the reveal of uh, these people that live in this small village and they are trying to keep uh, everybody within it and they dress up as this monster. The monster itself, before you learn exactly what it is, was disturbing i remember seeing it and just having to close my eyes as i was younger and still to this day when i see clips of it on like youtube or whatever it's still really creepy to watch but i love uh some of the more softer moments for these characters in their world and how they live in here and how they perceive everything and the conversations about that and the outside world as well and we get to see all of that play out but some of the conversations that the characters have we have some really sharp dialogue within here and some dramatic moments that do work at times the tone is chilling at times it's a bit softer and uh more personal for the characters i've always enjoyed the village and i understand why people would have it lower on the list but it's one that i've always enjoyed watching coming in in fourth place is split James McAvoy gives a really good performance in here as he plays different characters. He has this split personality. You don't know what you're going to get with James McAvoy, and you're not sure what to trust in the film. Uh, and he might have a really outlandish performance or really more quiet performance. And I applaud James McAvoy because he's really playing all these different characters, and he makes each one feel different from the other character. And I love that within this film. At times, this film can be disturbing and violent, but a lot of it is unsettling due to that performance. What makes this film so good is James McAvoy in it. And you're not sure what you're going to get with the film. When the film wants to be crazy, James McAvoy is there to match the tone. This is a wild film that at times, like I said, does feel a bit cliche and repetitive, but this is a great film, uh, one that kind of brought him back to that kind of horror genre after the visit and returned to some more suspenseful films after a string of bad films with the happening and the last airbender and after earth he kind of returned to form within this movie coming in in third place is unbreakable i love how this film presented the ideas of villains and heroes but really 
explored a lot more of them and their relationships and uh, how the world views them and how they view the world as well. It's a unique take on the superhero genre. It's not relying on big battles between heroes and villains. It's a more personal story for them. And I appreciate that because you really got to know Samuel Jackson and his condition and how he envies uh, Bruce Willis's character and he's unbreakable besides being in water. Uh, this character can endure a lot and the polar opposite characters really builds that conflict and that tension between the two and how uh, Samuel Jackson is jealous of Bruce Willis. I love the exploration. I love how it is very personal for these characters in a much smaller superhero film that is relying on the characters to grow and have an understanding of uh, how they perceive their own abilities and understanding their abilities as well and not wanting to have that kind of uh, burden on them as well. It's a great film. It's well acted. The direction in here is beautiful. The cinematography is amazing. It's always been one of my favorite M. Night Shyamalan films. Coming in in second place is The Sixth Sense. This has an iconic reveal of I See Dead People with Bruce Willis. It's been one that's stuck around for ages. Uh, everybody knows that line. It's a reveal that people just sound to be, it's a reveal that people found to be really shocking. I remember the first time I saw it, I did not see that coming. And it really surprised me. And still to this day, I could watch it and kind of look at Bruce Willis as his character and then uh, look at the situations he is in or the conversations he has with people and really look at that character. Now I know what is happening within the film. It's so fun to rewatch this film and look at everything involved with the movie and kind of play backwards of what I already know. Haley Joel Osment is really good in here. Looking at what he's going through, uh, those add to the dramatic scenes within the movie. And when you know exactly what's happening, it makes all of the moments prior to that more sad to watch because feel connected to the characters and Bruce Willis gives a really good performance in here as well. But looking at the unknown and humanity and what people fear, there's so many different themes that M. Night Shyamalan tackled in here and it was all presented in a very thought out way. The characters' explorations and the relationships as well. Uh, a lot of the scenes feel important when you look at like the overall reveal of the film. The Sixth Sense is chilling at times. It's personal and dramatic. It's well written and one of his best directed films. But coming in in first place is Signs. This is a very important film to M. Night Shyamalan and I would say maybe one of his most popular ones as well. The first time I saw it and watching that alien cross that alleyway, I, I can still... <laughs> pictured that moment I first saw that and like my body just froze. Watching this family led by Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix navigate uh, their crop circles and uh, aliens uh, coming to earth. Uh, watching that family grow is the best part of the film and how they are relying on each other and watching Joaquin Phoenix and Mel Gibson grow as characters and watching the children rely on them. That growth for the family is very strong. When we have the aliens at the end, I do think it's a little bit lackluster and we look at the reveal, uh, the water is their weakness. We see pieces of Mel Gibson's wife throughout the film and how she and how she died and we have those moments kind of sprinkled throughout the film and how it's important to the end of the film. I didn't think it was as grand or as exciting as I thought it would be because you've had a really good solid buildup to the end. I just expected a lot more from the end. I do find the end, like I said, to be lackluster and a bit of a disappointment, but everything prior to that is very solid. At times, it's chilling and mysterious, but Signs to this day is still creepy to watch for that alien scene. It is, it's such a good film, and I understand why people love it so much and why it stood the test of time and why people thought he was the next Spielberg, unfortunately. His movies just kind of fell apart after that, but I still like the director. He's got some good 
quirks to him and his style is definitely there in every new release i'm looking forward to seeing his films so there you guys have it all 15 m night Shyamalan films ranked worst to best how would you rank them let me know in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming content like this my name is just watches movies and you guys stay classy youtube